Well, this is the kit you get when you take part in the Norfolk Bat Survey, and it includes uh, the actual detector itself, which is, is there. You've got a battery recharger with, it should have a set of batteries in already. Um, then you've got a microphone lead, and um, you've got a, uh, a memory card. What you need to do at the beginning is plug in your microphone lead to the detector, which is on the left hand side of the detector, opposite, there's a little window on the right which shows a, an LED in there. Uh, you just plug it into the left hand side and the way you do it is you just twist it until it goes into the socket and then there's a little part you actually just twist which just locks it in place and you see that's quite sturdy. To unlock it you twist it again and put it out so there's no, you don't need to, to force that at all. Um, when you get the detector, uh, to get into it you're given a screwdriver and you, there's four screws which you can unscrew at the corners. So you unscrew those and the, the lid itself comes off quite easily and then when you actually get a detector you'll have four batteries already in there and these have been used by the previous person so the idea is there's always one set of charged batteries to be used the set that's in the charger have been charged by the previous person so what you need to do is swap over the batteries so you pull out the batteries like this and you replace them with the ones which have been on charge by the previous person. Like that. Sometimes it can be a bit of a, a bit of a battle to get the get the batteries in. So okay the batteries are in place. What you then need to do is take the memory card and you put that into the first slot. It says slot A next to it. And that goes in. You just make sure it, there's a clicking noise to make sure it's actually clicked into place. And then next thing you do is you turn the detector on. Okay, so to turn the detector on, on the right hand side you've got a power switch. It says power source. And what you want to do is switch that switch to the top, which says internal, and what you'll find is the detector turns itself on. You'll see it gives various information saying the date, the time. Uh, it's got 16G, 16 gigabyte card, and 0%. 0% is just that uh, the car's empty. As you get recordings, that percentage will go up. Um, to set the detector, to activate it, you just need to do a few things. And to do those, you use these four buttons. There's an up and down button, a back and a select button. Click on select and it'll bring up a different screen with schedule, settings and utilities. Click select again and it moves the tab over. Click select again. And this is um, programming for the time you want the detector to switch on. Uh, and for the number of hours you actually want the detector to keep an ear out for bats. So at the moment the previous person set it to switch on at 8.30 and to stay activated for nine and a half hours. So really you just want it to cover the whole period of darkness and um, it doesn't matter if it's still light at the time, it's just to, it's really just a way of saving battery power. Um, so to change the numbers, you can click on up and down. You just move across by clicking select, move up and down. So now it says 2130. I'm, I'm going to keep it the same, 2030. Keep activated for nine hours. I can just click on to the end of the line, then click on back. The only other thing you need to click to select is um, under the next one down, under settings, click select, and then go one down to location click select again it says prefix prefix next to that you just need to put in your one kilometer grid reference for the square you're going to be surveying so let's say in my case it's 
TL 0685. You can move, change the numbers and letters by just moving the up and down buttons here. So I've changed it to TL 0685. Um, what it tends to do is cycle through the letters and then it'll go to numbers so you can get to the ones you want. You only need to put in your 1K grid reference here rather than trying to put in the exact location. So I'm only interested in getting the 1K grid reference. So it'll be two letters and four numbers only. When you finish doing that, you click on back to get to the original screen. And then to activate it, you at the top here on the left is a button that says uh, wake exit. Click on that and it will quickly say going to sleep until 30th of May, 8.30 and that's activated. Uh, to know it's actually working okay, there's um, a green LED light, so it's easier to see if you put the lid on. Um, when putting the lid on, make sure the, the padding on the back goes against the batteries which just keeps the batteries in place and you tighten the screws with a screwdriver uh, just being careful not to over tighten the screws and you can check it's activated because here there's a little green LED light which will flash once a minute at the moment when it reaches the time you told it to switch on so 8.30 in my case it will flash every second so if it's not doing that it's probably the batteries are either depleted or they're popped out. Um, good idea is to just try and keep the detector this way up. Um, if you're moving it between sites, it can be possible the batteries could just become dislodged and switch off the detector. But as long as you're checking the lights working, then it will be absolutely fine. So I put the previous batteries on to charge. They take about 12 to 18 hours to fully charge, so it's worth getting that on straight away. And then the only other thing you need to do is when you're putting the detector out in the field is attach the microphone and again you turn it until it clicks into place and then you twist that that central part you don't need to force it at all uh, it should be quite easy to to attach um, to actually lock it and that's quite that's quite secure and what you want to do is to get um, this microphone right up into the flyway of bats to maximise your chance of getting good recordings. And to do that, you've got a telescopic pole which you put together. You've got three bits. Let's throw those on the ground. Um, the small one goes inside, medium sized one, and then uh, I can figure it out. The big one goes through there. So the idea is these just pull out, you just need to make sure they don't collapse in on themselves. And the idea is to get the microphone up at the top. So you actually now need to put it down to actually get to the top. So what you need to do is attach the, the microphone to the to the pole. And the way you do that is you use these resealable. Yeah, let's use these. So you use these resealable cable ties. And the idea is you want to try and get that uh, up into the flyway of the bats. You make sure the cable ties are pointing away from the microphone. And to actually secure it, you take the spike, just push that into the ground so it's sturdy, and then the actual pole itself sits over that. And it doesn't matter if it moves around a little bit in the wind, but basically that's the idea. You're getting, getting the microphone up into the flyway of bats. And that's it. And then on every Every night, the detector will automatically turn on 8.30, whatever time you told it, switch off at the time you told it, and it will do that for three nights. So you don't need to go, once you've set it, you don't need to then go in again and uh, change anything else. Uh, just worth making sure that the LED light's flashing okay to show it's working, and that's it.